Hey guys, Anthony at Macron Music here with Tim from ESP Guitars down in Melbourne. Um, me and Tim were actually lucky enough to head off to Tokyo together on a, uh, a lovely trip. Not that kind of trip, but it was a uh, oh, guitar call it, trip. I'd call it that trip. It was that kind of trip. Yeah. We can't talk about that kind of stuff. But um, we, we went over to both the ESP Custom Factory and the uh, E2 and Standard Series Factory. Um, had an awesome time, didn't we? It was a great time. I think for me personally, um, it was very much of a sort of a, a childhood dream come true. Yeah. Um, for me, I've been an ESP fan since I was, I don't know, 13, 14 when starting guitar. So seeing all that stuff, seeing the process um, and everything sort of getting made was was really cool. Um, I think one of the things we both spoke about when we were at both factories, because they are two different factories, um, even in the standard series factory where there are CNC machines and a few more, um, I guess, streamlined processes, everything is totally handmade. So the, the custom factory, they built their own custom machinery, which they make every single thing by hand on. So we're watching guys hand cutting out bodies and hand cutting out necks um, and, and just the variations of what you can do in a factory like that. We saw some amazing things, didn't we? I think seeing also seeing the precision of it all. Yeah. Everything was kind of done at one go. You could see the real um, investment in time and effort and, and just all around commitment to the product or, or getting the product made which is really cool um, and yeah again that's that's for both it was just a really tight or uh, effortless process to see all that happen it was really cool yeah and I think well what we're going to talk about today is a few E2 models because when we were over there I think one of the overwhelming things that people in this country have probably failed to well not failed to understand but uh, have had difficulty understanding is the switch over from the old standard series to the E2 because of the rebranding on the headstock now we, we sell you know these, these guitars, you know, quite often have done for the last couple of years, and the overall craftsmanship on these things is just ridiculous. Uh, one thing to know about the E2 line is that there is no difference, really, with the ESP standard or ESP headstock model and an E2, it's exactly the same. Um, they've purely just wanted to dif differentiate the the branding against ESP Custom Shop and E2 in the standard line. Yep. Um, it's flawless in every way, the, f the finishing, the fret work, um, the components and the woods that are being used is is at a touring level, um, above, studio I, level. I yeah, think for the amount of money you're spending, yeah. it's it's almost like a precision custom instrument that you're buying, you know, and for under three thousand bucks. It's, it's kind of just ridiculous. like a set option, yeah. but at a at almost a custom shop level. We're going to bring a guitar over. So this one here we've got is a um, is a is an E2 Horizon part of the current Magicans. lineup. Uh, I hope you can see that. You want to grab it? Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Sorry. So <laughs> we've got the Horizon shape and uh, the color, Timmy. Yeah, this is a, a blue slash uh, purple gradation. Um, so this model, particular model here, is a mahogany body with uh, a quilted maple top. Uh, for EM or for pickups, we've got EMG's fifty-seven sixty-six set. So you've got those exposed pole pieces. A very nice uh, sort of bridge between active and a passive tone. They've yep. become quite popular in the E two line. But in terms of the way this this model is actually um, built, it's all pretty stock standard in the Horizon line. Um, so you can see the cutaways are nice and easy to get to. Uh, the finishes, again, are flawless. And this is the Horizon 2, so you've got the pointy headstock, yep. um, which is very, very liked amongst the metal players. So, yeah. And we, I think, uh, we're a big fan here of uh, the, the ebony board, like the ebony fretboard is amazing, yes. uh, and the side markers are really classy, but also the, uh, the string through design over the Trumatic Bridge is a big sort of, uh, we find it to be a big favourite of guys when they're buying um, these Horizons. Also flip it around, you've got the locking machine heads. So, you know, standard model for under 3000 bucks, you're getting a lot of appointments which you wouldn't get on a normal guitar like that. You've got the battery compartment on the back there as well, which is a push access to change a battery out. It's a super, super easy guitar. And if you want to, you know, it'll handle anything you throw at it. If you want to put heavy strings on it and, and detune it, with that style bridge and, and that construction, you're going to have no problems with that at all. And it's just a, a ridiculously nice color. I hope you can see on camera how nice that translucent finish is where you've got the maple through. When you turn it in the light, it just looks fantastic. And it is purple down here and goes to that blue gradation. So just a, a really, really cracking model and been quite popular for you guys as well, haven't they, this year, these year's models? Absolutely. The E2 line um, has definitely experimented a little bit more with its finishes. Uh, I guess back the past maybe maybe two years, maybe a year, you've seen a lot of just sort of blacks and, and whites and all that sort of stuff, which is great, and it's obviously the standard for the heavier type player. Yeah. player. But I think this opens a world, and I think the trend in probably just all around uh, is a lot of colours, yeah. a lot of striking finishes, so well, this has been great. <laughs>
swap it back for the next one, yep, which is easy. equally as great but very different. So we've got an an M series guitar here, Tim. But um, one of the first times ESP have done a factory guitar with bare knuckles as the standard option. Tell us about that. Um, bare knuckles is newly introduced for ESP and LTD. Mm. So we have the Neil Westfall Eclipse uh, signature model with aftermath pickups, and the same with these guys here. So these are the battle worn covers. Um, yeah, just the first of its kind. I guess this is just to expand the E2 line and the and the LTD line as well. So they're very popular hand wound hand wound British made pickups. Yeah. Um, this particular model here again is a mahogany body. We've got a maple neck and a maple fingerboard, and obviously the uh, the figured uh, quilted maple on top. Now the finish of this one is called uh, dark turquoise turquoise burst, um, and again a new finish for the year. And what's different to this M compared to a lot of M's out there is the hip shot bridge. So we usually find um, Floyd Roses on, on the M's, yep. where this guy's the, the fixed bridge. So, And I think one of the questions we get asked a bit, and, and it's, I guess one of the things that trips people up a little bit, M series and Horizon are both very similar shapes from the, from the exterior, but you've got a, a much more... I guess, traditional style body here, less curvature, less sort of... I mean, what what's the primary thought behind the design difference between the Horizon and the M-Series? Absolutely. I would just say that the Horizon is is purely... It's an arch top sort of yep. version of this, where yep. this is a little bit more super straighty in a way. It's still flat, but it kind of takes off. Yeah, yeah. It's got it's got the, yeah. the right the right curves in the right places. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, in a yeah. funny way of saying it. But um, uh, yeah, so... It's just a lot more of a, yeah, more of a classic yeah. vibe on the, on the shape where horizons are a little bit more arched and, um, yeah. Flip it around so you can still see as well. They're still using the string through um, design, but through the through, through the hip shot bridge, which is again you're getting the string all the way through the body, which a lot of those guys like when you're playing the heavier stuff. It's going to make it a, a, a much more chuggier kind of guitar. Just pickups aside, I'm not a bare knuckle guy. I've, I've not played a lot of them. What are your like? What are your thoughts on difference? You know, in in the metal world compared to the EMGs and the Duncans, like what are your thoughts on bare knuckles? Bare knuckles are great. They're a lot more boutiquey and, and they're they're a high end uh, hand wound pickup company. Yeah. Um, I feel like they're just another, not just another, but they're a great addition to the tonal palette that we have on offer with EMG and with Seymour Duncan. Yeah. Um, they are, especially with the aftermath pickups there. They're a contemporary high output pickup, yep. so they're great for um, tight that tight metal sound. Yeah, similar to what you'd find with an EMG, maybe just less compression is what you get. Sure, you know, out of active pickups. So, uh, is there anyone in the ESP signature signature lineup that's using bare knuckles on the signatures yet? Um, the Neil Westfall. Okay, so that's just right. just that LTD. Yep. yep. Uh, I think. From memory, I think that's it. That's it. I now. think you're going to see a few more guys in the next few years changing over to that. Not, not that there's anything wrong with EMG, and I think that that is still the standard pickup. As are you know the blackouts for Seymour Duncan, popular pickups for guys in metal bands. But I think these bare knuckles are giving someone an, an option. And if you've got a you know a few guitars in the lineup, it's always worth to have something a bit different. I think they look. I mean, that's not not that it's important, but they look badass. Oh, well, they, they look, look great. Really cool. Yeah. Um, the thing with bare knuckles is that they do have a big custom selection. So if you were to get these directly. Um, I think in Australia they're probably four or oh, five hundred bucks I a think set, so, yeah. Um, yeah. which is a lot of money, a lot of money. <laughs> for yeah. pickups. So yeah. to have this as a standard option, yeah. um, and we're not looking at increases in prices of the guitars as well. Yeah. So still under three grand. Exactly. Yeah. bring one more in and this All is right. one of my favorites so this is actually an older one so um i believe still part of the current lineup yes it's i think it might might be the last three years it's been in the lineup yeah and only be, well because it's a classic yeah for e2 yeah um the dark brown sunburst horizon is something that's been around for a while in many different uh, variations um but still one of our most popular models yeah um so again a mahogany body a maple neck with an ebony fingerboard 
and a flame top in a dark brown sunburst finish. And again, third different style of bridge. We've got the yeah. like the tunematic bridge with the tailpiece. You've got Duncans on board here. What Duncans are on this guy? Uh, this is a JB custom hybrid. Okay. And then you've got a Jazz in the neck. Okay. So again, very versatile. You find that the custom five and the Jazz is in a lot of LTD models this year. Yep. Um, purely because they're just very versatile and yep. not swaying in any way at all. Yep. Heavy. You could be a jazz player and use them. I was going to say, jazz fusion guys are big with this sort of stuff. You know, Absolutely. that kind of sleek um, strat style design with the nice kind of fast profile neck. You've got the locking heads as well on the uh, on the Horizon style headstock rather than the uh, hockey style headstock. Yep. So, And then you've got the, you know, it's just nice to have an alternative that's not an active pickup in there that's going to give you a bit more versatility for other styles of, of playing. Yeah. Um, so, you know, ESP is not just a metal brand. There's a lot of a lot of guys and a lot of genres out there that, that play these things and, and just go on the actual feel of them and especially with guys that are really, really technical. The sides of these necks, I always find the profile of the way that they actually finish the frets is almost flawless. You can't feel it and it's just such a fast-moving neck. I think um, that's something that's that really sets apart you know, a, a, a Japanese production line to yeah. anything else out there is that it's out of the box playable, ready to go yeah. at in any any level. So yeah. like I, I totally agree with you. Just having having a feel of this now, it's just it's amazing to have something like this just come out of the box out of the case actually. Yeah. All E twos come with the case. So yeah. Um, that's good to know. But and yeah. they all come with elixir strings as well. We learned that over there. That's, that's right. They all yep. come with elixirs on them, which is, I mean, it's different. Not every brand has elixirs on them, especially electric guitar companies. It's not, not a done thing. Um, and that's a string that ESP have chosen to go with and all their electrics. Yeah, so, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Um, beautiful guitars. So I suppose rounding all that up, I mean, e E2, I suppose the one thing I wanted to talk about briefly was the fact that the part, the whole part of the trip that blew us away the most, and Tim mentioned, was the, the, the ability to customize and build guitars that nobody else is building. Um, and and I'll sh we'll put something in the video. We saw a guitar over there that they'd actually used electricity. They put a positive and a negative electrode on each end of the timber and run power through it and it actually scorched and burned the tracks in the guitar because the, the, the power was trying to meet up and it would just follow the path of least resistance. They then chiseled those out and filled it with like a resin that is reacting to blue light. Yeah. And it was one of the most amazing things I've ever seen in my life. Uh, uh, Electropyrography, pyro, yeah. pyrography, if that's how you pronounce it. Yeah. I'm not entirely sure. But yeah, th that was the first of its kind I've seen happen um, on a custom shop or on a guitar. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I've got some photos. If you, or you yeah, we'll, we'll put them in, I got a video. We'll yeah, put it, yeah. we'll put it in the video. But that was the first time ESP actually have ever done that, and they did it for a customer. Um, they actually trialed the process for a customer who said, "Can you do this?" And they said, "We've never done it before, but but let's do it." Now that's the extreme end of things. I suppose one of the things that people in Australia don't really realize is that you have the ability to come into any ESP dealer and and chat to us about getting your guitar built from scratch. Now that means that you can have whatever standard ESP body shape, whether it be an Eclipse. An M, a Horizon, whatever it is, except for the uh, M2s, is it the, <laughs> the, the, the uh, that you couldn't get, which are now don't tease me, illegal, right? illegal in this country. Um, no, any shape that they do that's standard. MX2, by MX2, the way. MX2, sorry, I was going to say. Get we'll, keep that, yeah. we'll keep that. We'll keep that MX2. The, the old Hetfield Explorer. <laughs> um, they, um, you can customize it. You can get whatever inlays. You can you can muck around with the different um, bridge styles, pickup styles. Like I was able to customize a straight horizon. I got an alder body on that one there, um, and I got the string through with tunematic bridge. I got the blackouts, the ebony board. I didn't want markers. Um, you can choose your headstock design, and and all for a really really affordable price and a really really good wait time. Eight months lead time on a full custom master built from scratch. And um, I, I think from memory, it's it was one guy working at one guitar. That's it. At each time, yeah, he starts so it, he finishes it. That's, it's yeah. it's a it's a very thought out process. There's a lot of effort and a lot of attention to detail. There is a price uh, tag involved. Um, whether that be affordable to some people or expensive to some people, the one thing you do have to know is that, you know, in my biased opinion, that it's the best guitar you will ever have. It's the best guitar made guitar in the world. Thank you so much. I really appreciate you coming by, and we had a great time in Japan. Thank you for yeah, organising right. all that. Um, Thanks for coming. Got, yeah, awesome. <laughs> if you guys have got any questions about ESP, LTD, E2, anything in that 
in that realm, come and see Luke at the shop or, or email us or chat to us online. We're happy to, to entertain uh, any sort of crazy designs that you come up with. Um, and we love we'll seeing him at the office too. That's right. Getting, exactly. the, getting the, the quote forms or order forms come in to see what you guys can think of is, is, a, is a fun thing to do as well. So, yeah. uh, and these guys are down in Melbourne and we have a great relationship with these guys. So, you know, we'll make it happen. Um, thanks to Tim from ESP. Thanks, guys. And we'll catch you soon. Cheers. Thanks, boys.